praise the name of the Lord. Second Kings. Chapter 6. Falma Wapili Sura ya Sita. And uh, Second Kings chapter 6. Falma Wapili Sura ya Sita. Now, the Bible says in Second Kings chapter 6, verse 8. Ah, tunasoma kuanzia mustari wanane wa falma wapili sura ya sita. Allow me to read in English. I think we shall interpre interpret uh, as we move on. Amen. The Bible says, Now the king of Syria was making war against Israel. And he consulted with his servant saying, My camp will be in such and such a place. And the man of God sent to the king of Israel saying, Be, Beware that you do not pass this place, for the Syrians are coming down there. Then the king of Israel sent someone to the place of which the man of God had told him. Thus he warned him, and he was watchful there, and not just once or twice. Verse 11. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing. And he called his servants and said to them, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? Verse 12. And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet, who is in Israel, Tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. So he said, go and see where he is, that I may send and get him. And it was told him, saying, surely he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there, and they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So when the Syrians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Strike these people, I pray, with blindness. And he struck them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. Now Elisha said to them, This is not the way, nor is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. So it was when they had come to Samaria that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men, that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw. And there they were inside Samaria. Father, I thank you and bless you for your word. And I ask in the name of Jesus. To use me in the next few minutes. To speak a word that comes from you. I pray in Jesus name Every eye today shall be opened And that your people shall get to see the glory of God Father I pray for those right now who are surrounded God they shall see and they shall know but greater is the multitude of the armies of the Lord as compared to the armies of this world. And I pray in Jesus' name 
Naomba katika jina la Yesu. Father you shall heal us. Kwamba Bwana utatuponya. And you shall restore the broken hearted. Utarejesha nyoyo iliyovunjika. To the praise and to the glory of your name. Kwa sifa na utukufu wa jina lako. Receive honor and praise. Ah, pokea sifa na heshima. Give me the utterance. Nipe usemi. That God I will only say. Na kwamba ni wewe utaonekana. The only that which is spoken from your heart. Kile ambacho kimeneno kutoka kwa moyo wako. Every other word that is not from you. Kila neno ambalo alitoki kwako. I pray that it shall not see the light of a new day. Naomba kwamba alitaona mwangaza wa siku. This I pray. Hii naomba in Jesus name. Katika jina la Yesu. Somebody say amen. Mtu aseme amina. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. I want to share the word of God briefly today. Nataka nishiriki neno la Bwana kwa ufupi siku ya leo. And I want to call uh, the the title of this word. Nataka ni ipe mada ya neno hili. Oh that you may see. Chochote utakachoona. That all that you may see. Kile ambacho unaweza ukaona. Vile kwamba utaona. Vile kwamba utaona. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. And this is my prayer for every one of us today. Na hili ndio ombi la kila uh, langu la uh, kwa kila mmoja sasa God will leo. open our eyes. Na kwamba Mungu atafungua macho yetu. That we shall be able to have a good vision na tutakuwa na maono of what God is doing right now. Kile ambacho Bwana anafanya wakati huu. It is not by any coincidence that we have come my wife and I. Ah uh, si uh, kwa bahati tumekuja mimi na mke wangu uh, from taking our son so that an operation is done on his eyes. Ah uh, kwa kupeleka uh, mtoto wetu wa kwamba afanyiwe operesheni kwa macho yake. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. But I came to see that there is a vision that that there is a seeing that every one of us is supposed to see. Lakini nilikuja kuona ya kwamba kuna uh, maono ambao kila mmoja wetu anapaswa kuona. And before I get there I want, want us to understand the word that we uh, uh, that we have shared in context. Lakini kabla ni fikia hapo nataka tuangalie neno ambalo tumesoma uh, vizuri. This is at, at a time when uh, Israel uh, uh, the, the nation that was initially Israel has already broken up into the two kingdoms. Hii ni wakati ambapo taifa la Israeli ilikuwa tayari imegawanyika kama ma, uh, kuwa mataifa mawili. And and this is now the nation the but for the half that is called Israel sasa hii ni nusu ambayo inaitwa Israeli and which is called the northern kingdom ambayo inaitwa ufalme wa kaskazini and at this particular moment na katika wakati huu Israel had a very sore relationship with their neighbor Syria Israeli ilikuwa na uhusiano mbaya na jirani yake Ashamu but it also happens to be a very wonderful time uh, uh, prophetically Lakini pia ni wakati ambao ulikuwa wa kushangaza uh, katika hali ya kiunabii. It is a time when Israel is uh, is walking in sin. Ni wakati Israeli inatembea ndani ya dhambi. A very low time we can say spiritually. Wakati ambapo ni wachini sana kiroho. But at the same time Na wakati ule ule it is a moment of time when God has raised men of God. Ni wakati ambapo Mungu ameinua watumishi wa Mungu. First it was Elijah. Ya kwanza ilikuwa ni Elisha. Next is his successor who is Elisha. Aliyemfuata ni Elisha. And I have come to know that even when times are so bad, lakini nimekuja kujua hata wakati ni mbaya sana. When we are at our lowest spiritually, wakati tuko chini kabisa kiroho, watch out because it is the time when God will begin to raise the people uh, who will speak the voice of God. Tazama maana ni wakati Mungu atainua watu ambao watazungumza sauti yake. And at this particular moment, na katika wakati huu, we are told in the word of God, tunaelezwa katika neno la Bwana that the, the the nation of Syria, ya kwamba hii taifa la Shamu desired to attack Israel. Ikatamani kuvamia Israeli. But on the side of Israel, lakini katika upande wa Israeli, was a man of God called Elisha. 
kulikuwa na mtumishi wa Mungu aliyeitwa Elisha a man who could hear God accurately mtu ambaye angesikiza Mungu vizuri a man who could see what others are not able to see mtu ambaye angeona yale watu wengine hawayaoni and even though Syria was a mighty nation in terms of the weapons of this world na hata kama shamu ilikuwa ni taifa kubwa ukiangalia silaha zake in a sense we can say that Israel was still way ahead of Syria Tunaweza tukasema Israeli ilikuwa mbele ya Shamu because they had a man of God with them Maana walikuwa na mtumishi wa Mungu miongoni mwao A man of God who would hear and would also see from God Mtumishi wa Mungu angesikia na aone kutoka kwa Bwana And we are told that uh, that the king would occasionally tell his servants Na tunaambiwa ya kwamba mfalme angewaambia watumishi wake That is the king of Syria Huu sasa ni mfalme wa Shamu That we shall be attacking Israel at this and that point Tutakuwa tunavamia Israeli kutoka pande hii na ile ingine. And then by the spirit of God Na kupitia Roho Mtakatifu wa Mungu God would reveal this to Elisha Mungu angefahamisha mambo haya Elisha and Elisha would warn the king of Israel na Elisha angemwambia mfalme wa Israeli so he would he would tell him you please do not go in this way because you shall be under attack um, angemwambia usipitie njia hii maana utavamiwa and i'm sure that the king of Syria with his army would get to the place na nina uhakika mfalme wa Shamu na jeshi lake wangeenda mahali pale but they would find no one na wangepata hakuna mtu because Israel had already been warned by the Lord. Maana Israeli ilikuwa tayari imetahadharishwa na Bwana. And it went on like that until the king of Syria was frustrated. Na ikaendelea hivyo mpaka mfalme wa Shamu akachoka and wondered who is it that has been releasing his secrets to the king of Israel. Na akasema ya kwamba kuna mmoja wao anaachilia siri kwa mfalme wa Israeli. And someone told him not any other man it is just this man called Elisha. Na mmoja akamwambia si mtu mwingine bali ni Elisha. He is able to hear what you say in your bedroom. Anaweza akasikia kile unasema katika chumba chako cha kulala. And when I when I see this I am overcome by some kind of spiritual jealousy. Na nikiona hii napata ile wivu ya kiroho because I know we are talking of a man who lived in the Old Testament. Maana tunazungumzia mtu ambaye aliishi katika agano la kale. The spirit of the Lord would come occasionally upon them. Roho wa Bwana angekuja nyakati zingine juu yao. But now I am aware that we are living in the dispensation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Na ninajua ya kwamba tunaishi katika wakati wa Yesu Kristo. Where the word of God tells us that we have the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Ambapo neno la Bwana linatuambia ya kwamba tuko na baraka za Roho Mtakatifu. The word of God says in the book of John chapter 14. Mali neno la Bwana linasema katika Yohana 14 that he is able to make us know all that truth. Anaweza kutusababisha tujue ukweli wote, not some of the truth si baadhi ya ukweli but all the truth lakini ukweli wote praise the name of the lord bwana asifiwe when i read this i become a little bit jealous nikisoma hii napatwa na wivu kidogo that a man of flesh and blood ya kwamba mtu wa mwili na, na damu existing in the old dispensation aliyeishi katika agano la kale would somehow be able to know what the king is saying in his bedroom angeweza kujua kile mfalme anaongea katika chumba chake cha kulala by the spirit of god kwa kupitia kwa roho mtakatifu and therefore the king said okay if it is elisha na mfalme akasema kama ni Elisha find out where Elisha is mtafute anaishi wapi so that i may go and get him ndio niweze niende nimchukue and he was told he is in a place called Dothan akaambiwa anaishi mahali panaitwa Dothan and, and i don't know whether you are a curious bible student like myself na sijui kama wewe ni mchambuzi wa biblia kama mimi the only other place where Dothan is mentioned mahali pengine ambapo Dothan inatajwa it is in relation to Joseph inahusiana na Yusufu praise the name of the lord bwana asifiwe joseph was told by his father ambapo yusufu aliambiwa na baba yake to go and see his brothers aende aone ndugu zake and see how they are doing na aone vile wanavyoendelea and report to him na arejeshe report kwa baba yake everything is okay kama kila kitu kiko sawa and and you know what 
Na unajua nini? His brothers were in Dothan. Dugu zake walikuwa kule Dovani. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And sometimes I look at the word of God and I wonder what is happening here. Na wakati mwingine natazama neno la Bwana na shangaa linaendelea. A man of God who is able to hear God. Mtumishi wa Mungu ambaye anaweza kusikiza Mungu. And to see God. Na aone Mungu. By the name of Elisha. Kwa jina Elisha, he is also in Dothan. Anaishi Dovani, which was a place which had good pastures for the sheep and, and so on. Ambapo nilikuwa ni mahali pa kulikuwa na lisho bora kwa wanyama. But Joseph also, lakini Yusufu pia, who was a dreamer, ambaye alikuwa ni watandoto, a person again who would hear God. Mtu pia angesikia Mungu and see things in visions. Naone mambo katika uh, katika maono. He also comes to see his brothers in Dothan. Anakuja kuona ndugu zake pale Dothan. And I somehow see that Dothan is going to be a place of decision make of of decisiveness. Na ninaona Dothan ni mahali pa uamuzi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where two men who can see and hear God are getting into. Ambapo watu wawili wanaweza sikia na kuona Mungu wanaishi. The first one God Joseph, mmoja ambaye anaitwa Yusufu, he had gone there on behalf of his father. Alienda pale kwa niaba ya baba yake so that he can report to his father. Ndio aweze kuripoti kwa baba yake. The second man Elisha Ah wa pili Elisha is in Dothan ako Dothani so that he can hear from God again. Ndio aweze kusikiza kutoka kwa Mungu tena and so that he can report to the king. Ndio aweze kuripoti kwa mfalme what he is hearing from from what he is hearing from God kile anachosikia kutoka kwa Mungu Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. I think that this that we need a dothan in our lives. Tunaishi do, tuna tunahitaji dothani katika maisha yetu. Please where men of God can hear. Mahali watumishi wa Mungu wanaweza sikia. A place where men of God can file a report and give it back to the one who sent us. Mali watumishi wa Mungu wanaweza sikiza ripoti na warejeshe kwa yule aliyewatuma. But I see that Dothan was not going to be a, a, a kind place for both Joseph and Elisha. Lakini naona Dothani si mahali pa pumziko kwa Yusufu na Elisha. When Joseph came down to Dothan, wakati Yusufu alienda pale Dothan, his brothers got hold of him. Dugu zake wakamshika. And you know how they did? Na unajua kile walifanya. They sold him off. Wakamuuza. Where he ends up in slavery. Alipoishia katika jela in Egypt. Kule Misri. But even now once again, lakini hapa tena, the man of God called Elisha. Mtumishi wa Mungu aitwaye Elisha. When he is in Dothan, akiwa pale Dothan, they still make an attempt on his life. Bado wanajaribu kushika maisha yake. To arrest him. Kumshika. Take hold of him wamshike to stop his ministry wa wa komeshe huduma yake the ministry of seeing and hearing huduma ya kusikia na kuona hallelujah hallelujah but i came to speak to somebody today lakini nilikuja kuambia mtu leo if you happen to be a man or a woman who hears and sees god kama wewe ni mtu ambaye usikia na kuona mungu i want you to understand nataka uelewe that they will try to do it at dothan watajaribu kuifanya kama dothani the enemy may look Look like he has succeeded. Adui anaweza onekana kama amefaulu. But I want you to know. Lakini nataka ujue that a person who sees and hears. Mtu anayesikia na kuona is not the kind of person who you shall get and catch like like chicken uh, the way you think. Sio mtu ambaye utashika kama kuku vile unavyofikiria. A person who hears from God. Mtu ambaye anasikia kutoka kwa Mungu. He is not very easy to deal with. And that is why I came to bring you a message and say oh that you may see and your man and me let you jube ya kwamba je unaweza ukaona because when you are a man who sees mali ulipo wewe ni mtu unayeona it may be an army of your own brothers inaweza kuwa ni kwa niaba ya ndugu zako who have decided to terminate your dreaming ambao wameamua kukomesha ndoto zako and to bring it to an end na wazimalize but they do not know lakini hawajui that the man of god kama mtumishi wa mungu the kind of joseph ah yusuf ni aina hii even if you lay your hands on him hata kama utamshika there is something we know kuna kitu tunajua he shall continue dreaming 
ataendelea kuota dosi. He shall continue seeing things. Ataendelea kuona mambo. Take him to Egypt. Mpeleke Misri. His dreams will never cease. Bado dodo zake hazitakoma. Take him into the house of Potiphar. Mpeleke kwa nyumba ya Potiphar. You cannot be able to limit the man who sees. Awezi kukomesha mtu anayeona maono. You cannot be able to contain the man who sees. Awezi kumkomesha mtu anayeona maono. That is a man who is on the here physically. Huyu ni mtu tu ako hapa kiasili. But because he sees. Lakini kwa sababu anaona. He lives in another world. Anaishi kwa ulimwengu mwingine. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. They thought they would arrest Elisha. Walifikiria watamkamata Elisha. But they didn't remember but he is a man who sees lakini hawakukumbuka ni mtu anayeona a man who hears from god mtu anayesikia kutoka kwa mungu whose eyes are good ambaye macho yake ni mazuri and he sees clearly na huwa anaona vizuri that man huyo mtu it will be hard to arrest him itakuwa ni vigumu kumkamata praise the name of the lord bwana asifiwe and you know what na unajua nini he shall continue doing the work he was got to do ataendelea kufanya kazi ambayo alitiwa kufanya nobody can limit a man who sees maana hakuna mtu anaweza komesha mtu ambaye anaona therefore i have come to know kwa hivyo nimekuja kujua limitations that come into our lives vizuizi ambavyo vinakuja kwa maisha yetu it is simply because we do not see ni kwa sababu hatuoni because if you see you know the truth kwa sababu ukiona utajua ukweli if you see you know what others do not know ukiona utajua kile wengine hawajui you will not cry when they cry hautajaribu hautalia wakilia you will not mourn when they mourn hautaomboleza wakiomboleza because there is something else you know kwa sababu kuna kitu kingine unajua that they do not know ambacho hawajui praise the name of the lord bwana asifiwe so when the king came around to uh, with his people to get hold of this man wakati mfalme alikuja na jeshi lake kukamata huyu mtu they had the surprise of their lives walipata mpigo wa maisha yao first of all the man who is to be captured ya kwanza mtu ambaye anapaswa kukamatwa he is still sleeping bado amelala praise the name of the lord bwana asifiwe This reminds me of one time when my wife and, and I we went to to Israel with a group. Hii inanikumbusha wakati mmoja mimi na mke wangu tulienda kule Israel na kikundi Faith Evangelistic Ministry. Ah ah kikundi cha Faith Evangelistic Ministry. We went with the woman of God um uh uh Reverend Teresa Wairimu. Kaenda na mtumishi wa Mungu Reverend Teresa Wairimu. As we lifted off from Tel Aviv airport. Tulipo inuka na ndege pale katika uwanja wa ndege wa Tel Aviv. I I don't know what happened when we got up into the clouds. Sijui nini kilitendeka tulipofika kwa mawingu. And the aircraft was 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 feeling like it is uncontrollable. Na ndege ikawa ina uh, yumba yumba. That feeling of that you are falling. Hiyo uh, kuhisi ya kwamba mnaanguka. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I and I would hear people uh, calling upon the name of Jesus which is okay. Na nikasikia watu wakiliitia jina la Yesu ambao bado ni sawa. Those are the days when you hear people calling upon the names of their mothers. Mami, mami. Hiyo ndio wakati unasikia watu wanaita majina ya mama zao. And we found that very soon we were in great turbulence. Na tukahisi ya kwamba tumeingia kwa mawimbi. And we were about 100 over 100 people in the group na tulikuwa zaidi ya watu 100 kwa hicho kikundi and then people remembered that we had a woman of god with us na watu wakakumbuka kuna mtumishi wa mungu miongoni mwao an anointed servant of god mtumishi wa mungu ambaye amepakwa mafuta and therefore they decided to go and uh, uh, tell her that we need to pray <laughs> na wakaona waenda wamwambie tunahitaji kuomba The one who went to call the woman of god yule ambaye alienda kuita mtumishi wa mungu she was amazed alishangaa the woman of god was asleep <laughs> ah mwanamke wa mungu alikuwa amelala hallelujah hallelujah she was sleeping alikuwa amelala when she found that she was sleeping alipopata kwamba amelala she didn't say a thing hakusema kitu she just went back alirudi and told people na akaambia watu the woman of god is asleep mtumishi wa mungu amelala with all the turbulence katika hii msukosuko she was asleep alikuwa amelala for the rest of us 
We feel like the world is coming to an end. But as for the woman of God, she is in dreamland. And I believe this was the difference. This was a woman who was seeing clearly. She knew it is well. She knew it is okay. For us we are seeing the turbulence. But for her. She can see beyond the turbulence. She can see us lad in safety. She is still seeing other ministries she has got to do in other countries. But for some of us we are thinking about our children. I wish I talked to my mother before I came. Na hizi ningeongea na mama yangu kabla nikuje. Sasa ni kwenda ninaenda. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the woman of God was asleep. Lakini mtumishi wa Mungu alikuwa amelala. So when Elisha was surrounded. Wakati Elisha alizingiwa. The man who sees well. Mtu ambaye anaona vizuri. The Bible tells us. Biblia inatuambia. The servant of God. Mtumishi wa Mungu. Something woke him up. And as he went out of the house, he found that they were surrounded. Chariots upon chariots and troops upon troops are surrounding the city. He could not, he could not, he could not uh, contain himself. And he went back to the man of God. And he said, Alas, man of God, master, we are surrounded. And he even asked, What shall we do? Because we are finished. He looked at the army. At the size of the army. And he knew that it is over. Praise the name of the Lord. But I thank God because of what Elisha told him. Elisha must, uh, 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 must have probably told him. Probably, I'm saying probably. Elisha pengine, nasema pengine wenda alimuambia. Young man, why are you disturbing my sleep? But anyway, for you to know. Your way will do it. Greater are those who are on our side Wengi ni wale wako upande wetu than the ones that you are seeing. Kuliko wale ambao unaona. In other words he was telling the young man. Kwa maneno mengine alikuwa anaambia huyu kijana. Young man go back to sleep. Kijana mdogo rudi ukalale. It is well. Mambo yako sawa. It is well with us. Mambo yako sawa na. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. And 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 the young man was not convinced. Na huyu kijana hakuhakikishiwa. I can see he is not convinced. Hakukubaliana na maneno. That is where the man of God said, "Oh Lord." Akasema ewe Bwana. This is my prayer. Hii ndio ombi langu. Please open his eyes. Tafadhali fungua macho yake. That he can see as I am seeing. Aweze kuona vile ninavyoona. For this once oh God. Open the eyes of this man. Fungua macho ya huyu kijana. Let him see like I can see. Wacha aone kama vile ninavyoona. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. Na Bwana akafungua macho ya huyu kijana. The Bible tells us that he saw something he had not seen before. Biblia inasema akaona kitu ambacho hajawahi ona tena. There were chariots of fire. Kulikuwa na makasha ya moto. And horses of fire. Na farazi za moto. That were all around him around them and i believe that that is where he came to know oh is well Praise the name of the Lord. I have come to say today. What we need are simply that our eyes be open. When Jesus came wakati Yesu alipokuja this world katika ulimwengu huu one thing that he came to deal with was blindness. Kitu moja alikuja kushughulikia ni upofu. And if you look at the miracles of Jesus. Na ukitazama miujiza ya Yesu you see that there were quite a number of miracles where he opened blind eyes and I believe that this was was in a sense was, was a physical act to show the one great ministry that Jesus came to do that is opening the spiritual eyes that people had 
kuashiria muujiza mkubwa ambao Yesu alikuja kufanya ambao ni kufungua macho ya kiroho ya watu and make them to see what they could not see before na wasababishwa waone kile ambacho hawangeona hapo awali and even when Jesus went to Nazareth in a, in Luke chapter 4 and verse 18 and verse 19 wakati Yesu alienda kule Nazareti katika Luka 4 and he stood to read the scriptures na akasimama kusoma maandiko they had him over the the the, the scroll from the book of Isaiah wakampatia ile nakala akasoma katika kutoka kitabu cha Isaiah and he read from what we call Isaiah 61 na akasoma ile Isaya 61 and Jesus said the spirit of the Lord God is upon me na Yesu akasema roho wa Bwana yuko juu yangu for he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor maana amenipaka mafuta ni ubiri habari njema kwa maskini and to heal the broken hearted na kuponya waliovunjika mioyo and to proclaim liberty to those who are captives na kutangaza huru kwa wale waliofungwa and there is something that he mentioned kuna kitu alitamka and he said na akasema to open the blind eyes kufungua macho ambapo ambazo ni pofu praise the name of the lord bwana asifiwe because the greatest need was the opening of the eyes of people maana itaji kubwa ilikuwa ni kufungua macho ya watu that when their spiritual eyes are open wakati macho yao ya kiroho yamefunguliwa they will see like he sees wataona kama vile anavyoona elisha was a type of jesus elisha alikuwa mfano wa yesu and you know it's like he was praying for his servant na alikuwa anaombea mjakazi wake and he was saying let him see like i see na alikuwa anasema wacha aone kama vile ninavyoona and jesus came na Yesu akaja so that we may see like he sees ndio tuweze kuona kama vile anavyoona because if your sight is the sight of this world maana kama mtazamo wako ni wa ulimwengu huu you will live a harassed life utaishi maisha ya kusumbuka you will live a life which has no hope utaishi maisha ambayo hayana tumaini but if you would see like Jesus sees lakini kama utaona kama vile Yesu huona you will live an extraordinary life utaishi maisha ambayo si ya kawaida because where others are crying you are laughing maana wakati wengine wanalia wewe unacheka when others are mourning you are celebrating wakati wengine wanaomboleza wewe unasherekea when others are going down you are going up wakati wengine wanashuka chini wewe unapanda so, juu there is something you can see kuna kitu ambacho unaweza ona standing where you are ambacho ukiwa umesimama mahali ulipo others are not able to see wengine hawana uwezo wa kikuona praise the name of the lord bwana asifiwe no wonder when jesus came ndio wakati yesu alipokuja one of the of the great i ams in the book of john ah katika kitabu cha yohana ile i am kubwa the book of john has seven i am statements ah kitabu cha yohana kiko na uh, statement saba ambazo ni za i am which reveal who jesus who jesus is and what he came to do ambazo zinaonyesha uh, Yesu alikuja kufanya nini One of the I am statements that Jesus made a uh, moja ambao Yesu alisema I am is that I am the light in the book of John chapter 8 Ya kwamba yeye ni mwangaza katika kitabu cha Yohana sura ya 8 He came first on and foremost to bring light to those who are blind Alileta mwangaza kwa wale ambao walikuwa hawaoni because light is important Maana mwangaza ni muhimu If we have to see anything we have to see to have light kama tunapaswa kuona kitu lazima tutazame kwa mwangaza he said i am the light alisema mimi ni mwangaza and whoever follows me na yeyote anayenifuata whoever will follow me yeyote atakayenifuata he will never be in darkness hata wai kuwa kwa giza praise the name of the lord bwana asifiwe he said i am the light alisema mimi ni mwangaza so that your eyes can see ndio macho yako yaweze kuona since i came to tell you and to provoke you today wapendwa nilikuja kuwaambia na kuatia changamoto and tell you that we are not the kind of people who should be walking in ignorance na niwaambie sisi si aina ya watu ambao tunapaswa kutembea kwa kutojua if we have jesus in our hearts as indeed we have kama tuko na yesu na kwa kweli tuko na yeye we are not children of darkness we are children of the light sisi sisi si wana wa mwangiza sisi ni wana wa mwangaza and we are supposed to see like he sees na tunapaswa tuone kama vile anavyoona 
And somebody say amen. Say amen. We are supposed to see like he sees. Jesus would often say that I see my father work and I also work also. Yes, And I do not do anything other than what I see my father do. If we have Jesus in our lives, we are supposed to see like he sees. Praise the name of the Lord. So he said, I am the light. And whoever uh, uh, follows me or believes in me he shall never be in darkness praise the name of the Lord and I want to put it this way in the this, in this story that we have read in the book of 2 Kings uh, chapter 6 that the word of God says in that scripture there are several things that happened when uh, 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 or, or I put it this way that when uh, the eyes of this young man were opened and was able to see clearly several things happened and we also know something that Elisha himself who so clearly and properly according to uh, what that scripture says he was he, he did not have the kind of fear that the ma, that the young man had because he saw something if there is something that has overtaken the church, it is fear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is the fear that something terrible is going to happen. It is the fear that I'm going to die of disease. It is the fear that I'm going to be sacked from my work. The fear that I am all alone, nobody cares about me, I am finished. I am finished. And people feel surrounded. I want to put it this way. It is the work of the enemy to make sure he surrounds you. If you are looking for a situation where you will not be surrounded, not in this world. Praise the name of the Lord. He will always make sure that he surrounds you all around so that if you are using your physical eyes, you feel it is over. It is over. I am done with. Glory be to God. And therefore, for those who cannot see, the only picture they have in life is this that they are surrounded. And they will always feel that it is over. But if your eyes are good, if your eyes are good, you will see beyond the surrounding and see the one who surrounds the one who surrounds you. Utaona zaidi ya wale ambao wamekuzingira na uone yule amezingira wale wanaokuzingira. I'll say that again. Nitasema hivyo. Your eyes will be opened. Macho yako yatafunguliwa. And you shall see the one who surrounds the one who surrounds you. Na utaona yule ambaye anazingira yule ambaye anakuzingira. I don't care about the first level of surrounding. Sijali hile kuzingirwa kwa kwanza. I am looking beyond the physical walls that I'm seeing now. Natazama zaidi ya zile kuta za kawaida beyond those walls there are chariots of fire and horses of fire kuna magari ya moto na farasi za moto somebody say amen mtu aseme amina god will never allow you mungu atakuruhusu to be in such a place where you have no hope 
ambapo hauna tumaini. But the word of God says don't worry even when temptations come against you. Neno la Bwana linasema usijali hata wakati kujaribiwa kunakuja. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Because for every temptation, maana kwa kila kujaribiwa, the word of God says he is faithful. Neno la Bwana linasema yeye ni mwaminifu. And he has always prepared a way for you. Na saa zote ametengeneza njia kwa ajili yako. You should walk under it or you should walk through it. Ya kwamba utapitia katika kile njia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is faithful. I want you to say my God is faithful. My God is faithful. There will always be a way out for you. Saa zote kutakuwa na njia ya kupitia. But this way, lakini njia hii reaches there. Ambayo iko pale can only be seen with those whose eyes are open. Inaweza ikaonekana na wale ambao macho yao yamefunguliwa. Glory be to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. Now let me tell you the good news. Wacha nikwambie habari njema. The good news is that we are living in a wonderful time. Habari njema ni kwamba tunaishi katika nyakati za kushangaza. These are not the days of Elisha. Hizi si nyakati za Elisha. These are the days of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hizi ni siku za Bwana wetu Yesu Kristo. We have the spirit of God. Tuko na roho wa Mungu. Who enables us to be able to see. Anaye tusaidia kuweza kuona that which no eye has seen. Ambacho hakuna jicho limeona. That which no ear has heard. Ambao hakuna sikio ambalo limesikia. That which has never come into the heart of any man the things that god has prepared for those who love him praise the name of the lord we are now in that dispensation where even that which no buddha has been able to see God is causing us to see. Mungu ametusababisha tuone. The word of God says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9. Ah, hiyo inapatikana katika Wakorintho wa kwanza mbili mstari wa 9. It says, but as it is written, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. Wakorintho wa kwanza sura ya pili mstari wa 9. But as it is written, I has not seen no ear heard no have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Amen. Somebody say amen. Mtu aseme amina. And the Bible tells us how those things are revealed. Na Biblia inatueleza vile hayo mambo yamefunuliwa. How shall you see what others cannot see? Utaonaje kile ambacho watu wengine wakioni? It says in verse 10 Inasema katika mstari wa kumi. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit for the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Lakini Mungu ametufunulia sisi kwa roho maana roho uchunguza yote hata mafumbo ya Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By the spirit of God. Lakini roho wa Mungu. Those things have been revealed. Mambo haya yamefunuliwa. If you walk in the spirit, ukitembea ndani ya roho, your eyes will be good. Macho yako yatakuwa sawa. If you walk in the flesh, ukitembea katika mwili, your eyes will not see clearly. Macho yako hayataona vizuri. You will live in terror. Utaishi katika vya. When you are supposed to be living in celebration, ukipaswa kuishi katika sherehe, you will to live a life of mourning utaishi maisha ya kuhuzunika when you should be living a life of happiness ambapo unapaswa kuishi maisha ya furaha you shall be living in terror utakuwa unaishi katika kukuzunguka when you should be living in victory wakati unapaswa kuishi katika ushindi because when the spirit of the lord reveals this to you maana wakati roho mtakatifu anakufunulia haya kwako then you shall know basi utajua even though you felt surrounded hata kama unaisi umezingirwa yet there is something bado kuna kitu beyond what you are seeing with your physical eye zaidi ya kile ambacho unaona kwa macho ya kawaida praise the name of the lord bwana asifiwe if your eyes are not enlightened by the spirit of god kama macho yako hayajatiwa mwangaza na roho mtakatifu all you shall see are the armies of the Syrians. kile ambacho utakachokuwa ukiona ni wanajeshi wa shamu their horses and their chariots farasi zao na magari yao But I bless the Lord because if your eyes are opened. Lakini nabariki Bwana maana kama macho yako yamefunguliwa. You begin to see in glory. Utaanza kuona katika utukufu. I, I, I want to say that again. Nataka nirudie tena. If your eyes are enlightened you see in glory. Kama macho yako yametiwa mwangaza unaona utukufu. 
There is a world beyond the world we are in right now. Kuna ulimwengu zaidi ya ule ulimwengu tuko saa hizi. Where we can see what is happening what exactly is happening in heaven. Ambapo tunaweza ona kile kinatendeka kule. What is God doing? Kile Mbwana anachofanya. What is he up to right now? Anataka kufanya nini sasa hivi? You will be able to see it. Utaweza kuona. Does someone believe in that? Praise the name of the Lord. You see why Elisha was sound asleep? Wakati Elisha alipatikana akiwa amelala. Because he saw the small army of the Syrians. Maana aliona hawa wanajeshi wachache wa jeshi la Shamu. Which is an army of flesh and blood. Ambao ni jeshi la nyama na damu. You know when we talk about flesh and blood, tunapozungumzia mwili na damu, we are talking of calcium and phosphorus. Tunazungumzia kuhusu calcium na phosphorasi. Na phosphorus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are talking of magnesium. Tunazungumzia kuhusu magnesium. Magnesium. These are these are the minerals. Hii ni mambo ya kawaida. You, you see the minerals that you put in the shamba to make your crops grow. Hii ni uh, rotuba ambayo unaweka kwa shamba uh, ndio mimea ikue. The men you have been fearing in your life. Ah, what vitu ambavyo umekuwa ukiogopa kwa maisha yako? They are simple minerals plus water put together. Ni mbolea na maji zimewekwa pamoja. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you burn a man like I'm seeing these days people are very popular in incinerating their bodies. Ah, uki ukichoma mtu. Ukichoma mtu. You remain with only around 3 kilos of ash. Utabaki na jivu ya kilo kama tatu. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are the elements of this world. Hiyo ni mamba ya ulimwengu huu. The horses and the chariots. Farasi na magari. They are the elements of this world. Ni elements za mama ya dunia hii. But if your eyes be open. Lakini kama macho yako yatafunguliwa. You get to another world. Utaingia kwa ulimwengu mwingine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where the weapons of warfare are not carnal. Ambapo silaha za vita si za kawaida. But they are mighty in God. Lakini ni kuu ndani ya Mungu. In bringing down strongholds. Kwa kuangusha ngome. When you get to the other world. Ukiingia kwa ulimwengu mwingine. In the world of the spirit. Katika ulimwengu wa roho. Now you see other things. Na utaona mambo mengine. Wonders that cannot be explained. Vitu ambavyo viwezi kuelezewa. You get to see the army of the Lord. Utakuja kuona jeshi la Bwana. And when you see the army of the Lord. Na ukiona jeshi la Bwana. And you look at the army of the Syrians. Na uangalie jeshi la Shamu. Ah, uh, hautakosa usingizi. Hautakosa usingizi. Habia jirani usikose usingizi. Usikosa usingizi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Eti kwa sababu ya jeshi la Washami hapana. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a greater army. Kuna jeshi kubwa zaidi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. You know things happen in this world. Mambo utendeka katika ulimwengu huu. When we were traveling with with my wife and my son. Ah walipokuwa wakienda na mke wake na jana. We are on this airport and then there is a lot of rain and a lot of wind. Kuna wako katika uwanja wa ndege kulikuwa na mvua kubwa na pia upepo mkubwa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the plane is coming down. Ah ndege linashuka. And you, and when it is just about a meter from the ground. Na ikiwa imebakisha mita moja ishike chini. The pilot realizes he can't land. Ah huyu ah rubani akagundua hawezi tua. <laughs> He can't land. Awezi tua. And therefore he decides in the nick of time. Akaamua katika wakati huo to take it up again. Airejeshe juu tena. And you are going into a storm. Na mnaenda sasa kwa dhoruba. Those are some of the moments when you you feel uh, well. Hii ni wakati ambao unahisi. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. But I remember something was quickened a scripture was quickened in my in my in my spirit. Nakumbuka nikapata andiko katika roho yangu. As you can you can you can feel the pilot struggling. Unaweza ukahisi ule rubani anangangana. Because you are almost at the ground and now he has to take off and he has no runway to run on. Na kuna runway ya kuweka ile ndege. So that is the time when I remembered that Jehovah He is still enthroned in the storms. Ah, dion maana nilikumbuka Jehovah 
bado kiti chake cha enzi kiko katika let me, let me tell you if you your eyes if your eyes are open and if your eyes are enlightened wacha nikwambia wakati macho yako yamefunguliwa na yametiwa mwangaza you have the word of god to stand on uko na neno la bwana kusimama juu yake praise the name of the lord bwana asifiwe and i said na nikasema that he is still enthroned in the storms bado wako katika hata ile dhoruba even when it is like this hata kukiwa hivi jehova is still the lord jehova bado ni bwana and i remembered another one which says he carries us on his pinions na nikakumbuka ingine ambayo husema yeye utubeba katika mabawa yake hallelujah hallelujah and i said god we are now on your wings nikasema bwana tuko kwa mabawa yako praise the name of the lord bwana asifiwe and i thank god that finally seeing us here it means it was well na nikashukuru mungu maana Glory, glory be to God. Utukufu kwake Mungu. When you see, when you see well, ukitazama vizuri, you see glory. Unaona utukufu. There is a glory that opens before you. Kuna utukufu unafunguka mbele yako. And because of that glory, na kwa sababu ya hiyo utukufu, nothing that stands in between is going to make you have fear. Hakuna kitu kinachokuja mbele yako kitakusababisha uogope. In this world there are so many things that are able to give us fear. Katika ulimwengu huu kuna mambo mengi yanaweza sababisha uoga. But if we are seeing well, if we are seeing like Jesus sees. Lakini tukitazama vile Yesu utazama. We have no reason to be fearful. Hatuna sababu ya kuogopa. I remember the story of 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 uh, of uh, Saint Stephen as he was being killed uh, in the book of Acts chapter 7. Nakumbuka hadithi ya mtakatifu Stefano wakati alikuwa na apigwa mawe. The Bible tells me and this why I want to finish. Biblia inatuambia tutamalizia hapa. The Bible tells me. Biblia inaniambia that as they were stoning him. Wakati walikuwa wanampiga kwa mawe and even as as uh, as Saul who is later to be called Paul is watching over this persecution. Na wakati Sauli ambaye aliitwa Paulo alikuwa anatazama tukio hili. The Bible says in in Acts 7 and verse 55. Biblia inasema katika matendo ya mitume sura ya saba, mstari wa 55. The Bible says, Biblia inasema, but he that is Stephen, sasa huyu ni Stefano, but he being full of the Holy Spirit gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Lakini yeye akichaa Roho Mtakatifu akakaza macho yake akitazama binguni akauona utukufu wa Mungu na Yesu akisimama upande wa mkono wa kuume wa Mungu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They are busy killing this physical body. Wanajaribu wanaua huyu mwili wa kawaida. But the man of the spirit. Lakini mtumishi wa Mungu wa kiroho. He is busy enjoying the glory of God. Yeye anafurahia utukufu wa Mungu. He is seeing what they cannot see. Anaona kile ambacho hawawezi kuona. He sees Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Anaona Yesu akiwa amesimama kwa mkono wa kulia wa baba. Many scriptures talk about Jesus seated at the right hand of the Father. Maandiko huwa yanazungumza Yesu akiwa ameketi. But this this time round. Lakini wakati huu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord was standing. He gave Steph Stephen a standing ovation in heaven. Bwana alikuwa amesimama, alimsimamia Stefano akiwa kule mbinguni. Even as he, he has been killed. Hata wakati anapouawa, he sees something that others cannot be able to see. Anaona kitu ambacho wengine hawawezi kukiona. I think the mistake that Stephen made was to invite others to see what he has seen. Najua makosa ambayo alifanya ni kukaribisha wengine waone kila yeye anaona. So in verse 56 the Bible says. Katika mstari wa 56 Biblia inasema And he said look akasema tazama I see the heavens open naona mbingu zimefunguka and the son of man standing at the right hand of God na mwana wa adamu amesimama mkono wa kuume wa Mungu they could not understand this awangeelewa haya they stopped their ears wakapiga kelele and they stoned him na wakampiga hallelujah Be- hallelujah because they were blind maana walikuwa vipofu but Stephen 
His eyes were open. Lakini Stefano macho yake yalikuwa yamefunguliwa. He could see what others are not seeing. Angeona kile wengine hawakioni. Listen to me brothers and sisters. Nisikize ndugu na dada zangu. I have come to know that God does nothing until he has shown it to you. Nimekuja kujua Mungu afanye chochote mpaka akuonyeshe. He wants you to see it. Anataka uone. The problem is when we don't see it. Shida ni wakati hatuoni. My prayer is that we shall see it. Ombi langu ni kwamba tutaona. Stephen knew that 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 he is not standing to save me. Stefano alijua asimami kunisaidia ni kuniokoa. He is standing to welcome me home. Lakini amesimama ili anikaribishe. And it's like he is telling these people. Ni kama anaambia watu hawa. You are stones. Maroyen. I can't feel them. Siwezi kuyasikia. I can't feel anything. Siwezi kusikia chochote. I have seen the glory of God. Nimeona utukufu wa Mungu. My eyes perceive the presence of God. Macho yangu yameona utukufu wa Mungu. I know where I am headed. Najua mahali ninaelekea. I know where I am going. Najua mahali ninapoenda. And therefore he he was he was just waiting for the moment of time. Na kwa hivyo alikuwa anagojea huo wakati when he shall be united with Jesus. Ambapo ataunganika na Yesu. I have come to know in this world. Nimekuja kujua katika ulimwengu huu. Somebody is either an Elisha or the servant of Elisha. Mtu pengine ni Elisha ama mtumishi wa Elisha. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa Mungu. Either you are seeing the armies of the Syrians. Hata wanaona majeshi ya Washamu. Or you are seeing the armies of the commander of the forces in heaven ama unaona jeshi la amri jeshi wa mbinguni either you are seeing with your physical eyes pengine unatazama kwa macho yako ya kawaida or you are seeing with your spiritual eyes ama unatazama kwa macho yako ya kiroho blessed is he who can see amebarikiwa yule anaweza akaona because if you see correctly kwa sababu ukiona vizuri you will know what to do utajua jambo la kufanya be to god utukufu kwa mungu why do we walk in error ni kwa nini tunatembea kwa makosa? We walk in error because we cannot see properly. Tunatembea kimakosa maana hatuwezi kuona vizuri. We engage ourselves in things that we were never even caught to do. Tunajiingiza kwa mambo ambayo hatukuitwa kuyafanya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even Daniel, Daniel when he was in a vision. Hata wakati Danieli aliona maono after he was in prayer baada ya kutoka kwa maombi the word of god tells us neno la bwana linatuambia he saw the glory of god aliona utukufu wa mungu and someone like the son of man na mmoja aliyekaa kama mwana wa adam hallelujah hallelujah and others could not even see anything na wengine hawangeona chochote the word of god tells us again in the book of revelation neno la bwana pia linatuambia katika kitabu cha ufunuo in revelation chapter 1 katika ufunuo sura ya kwanza the bible says biblia inasema talking about John the Revelator. Ikizungumzia kuhusu Yohana ambaye ni wa Mungu. that when it was the day of the Lord. Inasema wakati wa siku ya Bwana, I was in the spirit. Nilikuwa ndani ya roho. Somebody say in the spirit. In the spirit. He says I was in the spirit. Anasema nilikuwa ndani ya roho. And because he was in the spirit. Na kwa sababu alikuwa ndani ya roho. He had a voice behind him. Akasikia sauti nyuma yake. And he looked and he saw. Na akatazama na akaona. Behind him is so nyuma yake akaona when you are in the spirit ukiwa ndani ya roho you will hear and you shall see utasikia na utaona and he saw the one who had that voice na akaona yule ambaye alitoa hiyo sauti the son of god mwana wa mungu praise the name of the lord bwana asifiwe it is good to be in the spirit ni vizuri kuwa ndani ya roho because you shall be able to see maana utaweza kuona like stephen stephen so clearly the glory of god kama stefano aliona vizuri utukufu wa mungu i came to pray for somebody today that you may see nilikuja kuombea mtu leo ya kwamba utaweza kuona know that i'm talking to a people who are surrounded even right now nazungumzia watu ambao wamezingirwa hata sasa hivi but i have good news for you niko na habari njema kwa ajili yako beyond you are being surrounded ah hata kama umezingirwa there is still the glory of god bado kuna utukufu wa mungu oh that you may see the glory ah naomba upate kuona ule utukufu that you may see the glory of god uone utukufu wa mungu it's god's desire that you see accurately ni tamanio la mungu uone vizuri there is a time when paul wanted to preach the gospel in in a, in asia kuna wakati Paulo alitaka kuhubiri injili kule Asia. But the word of God says that the spirit of the, of the Lord 
said no. Lakini Biblia inasema roho wa Bwana akasema hapana. And they reached a place where they even wanted now to preach by force. Na wakafika mahali sasa walikuwa wanataka kuhubiri kwa lazima. The word of God says the spirit of the Lord said no. Ah, Biblia inasema roho wa Bwana akawakataza. And then Paul saw something. Na sasa Paulo akaona kitu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God tells us. Biblia inatuambia. And when he was asleep, wakati alikuwa amelala, he saw a vision. Akaona maono. And he saw a man from Macedonia. Na akaona mtu kutoka Macedonia. And the man was saying, "Please come and help us." Na huyo mtu alikuwa anasema, "Tafadhali joo tusaidie." Come and help us. Joo tusaidie. And he knew It was the Lord speaking to him. Ni Bwana alikuwa anamzungumzia. The place to go is not in Asia. Mahali anapaswa kwenda si Asia. The place to go is in Macedonia. Mahali anapaswa kwenda ni Macedonia. Many of us have engaged in ministry. Ah, watu wengi wameingia kwa huduma. They have engaged in something and you are saying you are doing it for the Lord. Umeingia kwa jambo na unasema unalifanyia Bwana. But did you see lakini je uliona what did you see uliona nini did you see anything uliona chochote did you hear anything ulisikia kitu paul was could have could have said well i'm still working for the lord paulo angesema ndio bado namtendea bwana kazi and i'm zealous to preach the gospel in asia mimi niko na tamaa ya kuhubiri injili kule asia But that was not the will of God. Lakini hiyo haikuwa mapenzi ya Mungu. The will of God for the hour. Mapenzi ya Mungu wakati huo. Was that Paul preaches in Macedonia. Ilikuwa ni Paulo ahubiri kule Macedonia. And that is how he and his companions. Na hivyo ndivyo alipwa They went over to a, a, a town called Troas and they crossed the sea to the other side. Na wakavuka mtu wakaenda kule kwingine. And they went all the way to Philippi. Na wakaenda mpaka Filipi, which is where there was a great ministry that happened in the land of Philippi. Ambapo kulikuwa na huduma kubwa ambayo ilitokea katika mji wa Filipi. Why is it so? Kwa nini ilikuwa hivyo? It is because Paul saw. Ni kwa sababu Paulo aliona. If your eyes do not see. Kama macho yako hayaoni. If your eyes are blind. Kama macho yako yako na upofu. Pray to God until you see. Omba omba kwa Mungu uweze kuona. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will show you something. Mungu atakuonyesha kitu. And if you see, na ukiona, when you get into it, ukiingia kwa hiyo kitu, there will be tremendous success. Kutakuwa na ufanisi wa ajabu. But if you don't see, lakini kama haujaona, you'll be frustrated. Utakuwa mtu wa kugadhabisha. Some of the greatest blunders I have made in life is to do things when i have not seen anything baadhi ya makosa ambayo nimekosea katika maisha yangu ni kufanya kitu kama sijaiona and i have lived to pay dearly na nimeishi kulipia vizuri i pray that you shall see naomba ya kwamba utaona god once spoke to jeremiah and told him mungu akazungumzia akazungumzia yeremia akamwambia jeremiah what do you see yeremia unaona nini and jeremiah said i see an almond tree na Yeremia akasema naona mti Hallelujah I don't Hallelujah. know what it's called Amen and and Amen. And, and, and God said na you have seen correctly Na Mungu akamwambia umeona vizuri You have seen umeona vizuri Hallelujah Hallelujah I pray that it shall be the same with you Naomba ya kwamba itakuwa vile na wewe That you shall see correctly Ya kwamba utaona vizuri You shall see as God wants you to see Utaona kama vile Mungu anataka uone. God said you have seen correctly. Mungu akamwambia umeona vizuri. So I am now ready to fulfill my word. Sasa niko tayari kutimiza neno langu. You see God's word is awaiting a people who will see correctly. Unajua neno la Bwana linangojea watu ambao watakaona vizuri. The word has been spoken. Neno limezungumzwa. But how many people have seen? Lakini watu wangapi wameona vizuri? How many people have heard anything? Watu wangapi wamesikia kitu? The word remains undone. Neno linabaki likiwa litajatendewa kazi. Because God is waiting for somebody to see correctly. Kwa sababu Mungu anangojea mtu aone vizuri. He wants you to see in the in a vision. He wants you to see in the spirit. Anataka uone maono ndani ya roho. Those things that have never been seen. Mambo ambayo He will reveal them to you in the spirit. Atakufunulia ndani ya roho. I want to put it this way brothers and sisters. Nataka niseme hivi ndugu na dada zangu, if somebody will get themselves a good life partner, God has shown them. 
kama mtu atapata mke mzuri ama mme mzuri Mungu amemuonyesha if god will give you the ministry he ever called you to do is because he has shown you kama Mungu atakupatia huduma ambayo amekuitia ni kwa sababu amekuonyesha oh that i may see ndio niweze kuona somebody say oh that i may see Oh that I may see. Say again oh that I may see. Oh that I may see. Hi, I, I am amazed by a man called Bartimaeus. Nashangazwa na mtu ambaye anaitwa Bartimaeo. Bartimaeus was a man who was blind for all his life. Bartimaeo alikuwa ni mtu alikuwa kipofu maisha yake yote. But one time Jesus is passing by. Lakini siku moja Yesu anapita pale karibu. And you know but Myers knew that it is Jesus who is passing by. Na but Myers akajua ni Yesu anapita pale. And he called out to Jesus. Na akaliitia jina la Yesu, Son of David. Mwana wa Daudi, have mercy on me. Ni rehemu. And the other people who were there. Na watu wengine walikuwa pale. They told him keep quiet. Wakamwambia nyamaza. Watu wa aina hii hawahitagwi namna hiyo. Watu wa aina hii hawahitu hivi. Ovyo 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 ovyo. Kira nyamaza. But Myers when he heard that. Lakini Bartimaeo aliposikia hivyo. He knew the problem that he had. Akajua shida aliyokuwa nayo. And therefore, na kwa hivyo, when he was told to keep quiet, alipoambiwa anyamaze. The word of God says that he added a few more decibels to his voice. Neno la Bwana linasema akaongeza sauti zaidi. And he said Jesus. Akasema Yesu. Son of David. Bwana wa Daudi. Have mercy on me. Ni rehemu. Amen. And the word of God says Jesus stopped. Neno la Bwana ikasema Yesu akasimama. And told the people who are near him. Akaambia watu walipokuwa karibu. Go him. Neni mumuite. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they said, oh. <laughs> he is calling you. He's calling you. We don't know. But he is calling you. Anakuita. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when Bartimaeus came to Jesus. Na wakati Bartimaeus alikuja kwa Yesu. Jesus asked him. Yesu akamuuliza, "What would you want me to do for you?" Unataka nikufanyie nini? Every time when I read that scripture, kila wakati ninaposoma hilo andiko, I am amazed. Mimi nashangaa. If God himself asks you, kama Mungu mwenyewe angekuuliza wewe, what would you want me to do for you? Unataka mimi nikufanyie nini? What would you say? Utajibu namna gani? Utasema najibu. Just share with the neighbor for just one minute. Hebu shiriki na jirani yako. Kwa daika moja tu. What, what do you think? Unafikiria aje? Ungesema what, what would you say? What would you want him to do for you? Ungetaka Mungu akufanyie nini? What would you want him? Ungetaka akufanyie nini? I'm looking at those wonderful airplanes. Naangalia zile nywele zimeshukwa vizuri. A380 Airbus. Mhm. Hiyo 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 ndege ambao ni A so A Airbus A380. Airbus A380. I feel like I would wa- want to ask for around 5. Ningependa ningeweza kuuliza moja. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel like I would want to ask God because I don't want to I don't want to be to look like nimejipenda sana. Nipatie tu Westlands yote, Westlands tu peke yake. Ningependa nimuulize Westlands yote. Nairobi tu achie wengine kidogo. Amen. So many things I would ask of the Lord. Mambo mengi ningemuuliza Bwana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kashaba kuna tushaba tu ingine nina gari ya mugoda mugoda. Hallelujah. Shamba naangalia shamba. Maguta maguta. Shamba iko na mafuta. Kamenda 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 paka kwa mto. Kamenda kameteremka gently paka kwa mto. Kai baba. baba. Mogoda. Shamba. Who? <laughs> Many things. Mambo mengi. But not with but Myers. Lakini si Bartimaeo. He knew the greatest thing that a man should ask for. Alijua kitu kikubwa ambacho mwanadamu anapaswa kuishi. The best thing that 
one can ever ask for kitu kizuri ambacho mtu anaweza kuuliza and if he was asked time and time again he would have the same answer na kama amegeulizwa tena na tena kipindi ile jibu the problem he had shida ambayo alikuwa nayo he could not be able to see angeweza kuona and therefore he told jesus na kwa hivyo akamwambia yesu raboniai ah mwalimu that means great teacher ina maanisha mwalimu mkuu the name raboniai is the name used that is used was used for the light of the teacher of paul raboni ilitumiwa katika kiwango cha mwalimu kama paulo na raboniai is a title of honor a teacher of honor raboni ni a uh, ni usemi ambao ni uh, ni title ya heshima he called him raboniai alimuita raboni oh <laughs> that i may see niweza kuona Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That I may see. Niweze kuona. What I need above all things. Kila nahitaji zaidi ya yote. Is that I may see. Na ndio niweze kuona. Jesus I know. Yesu ninajua. I can do with two more cows. Na wewe naweza hata kufurahia ng'ombe wawili. I can do with a good business. Naweza kufurahia biashara nzuri. Good business premises. Biashara nzuri mahali pa biashara. I can do with a few buildings that you can give me. Na wewe furahia majengo ambayo unaweza nipatia I don't want those Lakini nistaki hayo I want to see Nataka nione When we read that we say it is because because the man of God was blind in his physical eyes Tukisoma hayo tunafikiria ni kwa sababu alikuwa kipofu kwa macho yake But no Lakini hapana This is a teaching in the word of God Hii ni fundisho katika neno la God is speaking to us. Mungu anatuzungumzia. The one thing that we need brothers and sisters. Kitu ambacho tunahitaji ndugu na dada zangu. It is that we may see. Ni tuweze kuona. We see like Jesus sees. Tuone kama vile Yesu anavyoona. We see the end from the beginning. Tuone mwisho tukiwa mwanzo. That when we are in the wilderness. Tukiwa jangwani. We can still see the land of Canaan. Bado tunaweza ona nchi ya Kanaani. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. When we are sir wakati umezingirwa we can still see the door to our victory bado tunaweza ona lango la ushindi wetu because jesus maana yesu jesus said i am the door for my sheep yesu alisema mimi ndio lango la kondoo and through me they shall go out and come in na kupitia mimi watatoka nje na wanaenda that you may see the door yoweza kuona lango when you are surrounded wakati umezingirwa that when you are in prison wakati uko katika gereza like paul and silas kama paulo na sila you don't see the chains hauoni zile pingu you see the work ahead unaona kazi iliyo mbele you see the god in heaven unaona mungu aliye biguni you take your instrument to pray na unachukua vibaa vyako vya siku and the bible says in the midnight hour na biblia inasema katika masaa ya na began to pray wakaanza kuomba and they began to praise god na wakaanza kumsifu bwana because their eyes so beyond the prison maana macho yao yaliona zaidi ya gereza oh hallelujah hallelujah they would see beyond their current limitations waliona zaidi ya mahali ambapo i pray for you today ninakuombea siku ya leo oh that you may see uweze kuona see beyond your weaknesses uone zaidi ya udhaifu wako see beyond beyond your diseases uone zaidi ya magonjwa zako see beyond your limitations uone zaidi ya upungufu wako there is a glory beyond your limitations kuna utukufu zaidi ya kupungukiwa kwako oh praise the name Wanaasifiwe. Let me put it this way brothers and sisters. Wacha niseme hivi ndugu na dada zangu. Do not give true praise if you don't see. Hawezi toa sifa ya ukweli. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It will only be pretentious praise. Itakuwa ni sifa ya kujifanya. You cannot have true joy if you cannot see. Hawezi kuwa na furaha ya ukweli kama wewe. It will be pretentious joy. Itakuwa ni furaha ya 
kujionyesha when you see lakini ukiona hallelujah hallelujah if your eyes can see kama macho yako yanaweza ona then your praise will be real bado sifa yako itakuwa ya ukweli your celebration will be a true celebration kusherekea kwako kutakuwa sherehe ya ukweli hallelujah hallelujah why because you are celebrating that which you can see ni kwa nini maana unasherekea kitu ambacho umekiona it's no longer in theory aiko katika mawazo You know why our praise is subdued? Unajua kwa nini sifa yetu imepungua? It is because our celebration is only in theory. Ni kwa sababu ile furaha yetu iko tu katika kwa mawazo. There is nothing we can see. Hakuna kitu tunaweza kiona. We can see our healing. Hatuwezi ona uponyaji wetu. We can see our victory. Hatuwezi ona ushindi wetu. The only thing we can see is this. Kile ambacho tunaona ni hii. But I said in the name of Jesus. Lakini nasema katika jina la Yesu. Somebody will not see this. Mtu ataona hii. But you see that. Ataona ile because this kwa sababu hii just near you ambayo iko karibu na wewe it is surrounded imezingirwa it is surrounded imezingirwa there is still something else bado kuna kitu kingine which is beyond this ambayo kiko zaidi ya hii it is there kiko pale but because you can see it lakini kwa sababu unaweza ona it will swallow this kitameza hiki while the Syrian Syrian army is still there Yes, yes, la shamu bado lilikuwa pale. Yes, they were there. Ndio walikuwa pale. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because somebody will begin celebrating. Maana <laughs> mtu ataanza kusherehekea. Oh, when there is no more Syrian army. Wakati hakuna jeshi la shamu tena. But not with Elisha. Lakini si na Elisha. He celebrates. Anasherehekea. Glorifies God. Anamtukuza Mungu. When the Syrian army is still there. Wakiwa bado wana jeshi wa shamu wako pale. Listen to this and this is the good part. Sikia hii na hii ndio inafurahisha. God will use the same Mungu atatumia ile ile the, the same the same people who surrounded you watu wale wale walio kuzingira the same things that were 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 terrorizing your life mambo ambayo yalikuwa yanasumbua maisha yako god will bring shame upon the same mungu ataleta aibu juu ya hao did, did i say it correctly shame upon the same ataleta aibu juu ya wale wale you know i come from central kenya hallelujah So he will bring shame upon the same. Atawaletea wale wale aibu. Eh hallelujah. Hallelujah. The people who surrounded him. Watu ambao walikuzingira. Who by themselves were blind. Wale ambao walikuwa vipofu wao wenyewe. The man of God having prayed for blindness to be taken away from his own servant. Ah mtumishi wa Mungu baada ya kuomba upofu utolewe kwa mjakazi wake. It is like he said. Ni kama alisema. Now take the same blindness. Sasa chukua hii upofu. That this man had. Ambao huyu kijana And he paid on the enemy. Na uwekelee adui. Because blindness is not ours. Kwa sababu upofu si wetu. Tell your neighbor that blindness is not our portion ambie jirani yako upofu si pande it is not for the kingdom si ya ufalme the master of our kingdom is called jesus bwana wa ufalme wetu anaitwa yesu and the bible says he is the way na bibi anasema yeye ndiye he is the truth yeye ndiye ukweli and he is the light na yeye ndiye mwangazi you cannot be blind hauwezi kuwa kipofu so he said anasema it's like he said take it from them from him alisema chukua kutoka kwake transfer it to these people ipelekee watu hawa and let them be blind waacha wawe people i said in the name of jesus anasema katika jina la yesu not you to be blind si wewe uwe kipofu the enemy will be blind about you adui atakuwa kipofu kwa niaba yako i prophesy in your life natabiria maisha yako he will look for you atakutafuta and will not get you na atakupata he will use every compass atatumia kila compass to trace you kukutafuta but because of the blindness lakini kwa sababu ya upofu he cannot Awezi atakuona. Those spirits that are sent to terrorize your family. Hizo roho ambazo zimetumwa kwa I said in the name of Jesus. Anasema katika jina la Yesu. Confusion and blindness upon them. In Jesus name. Kuchanganyikiwa na upofu. Somebody say yes. Katika jina la Yesu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Confusion and blindness upon them in Jesus name. Kuchanganyikiwa na upofu juu yao katika jina la Yesu. That is not of our kingdom. Hiyo si ya ufalme wetu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our kingdom is the kingdom of light. Ufalme wetu ni ufalme wa mwangazi. Tunaona vizuri. 
Tunaona vizuri. We see accurately. Tunaona vizuri. And they, these guys were told, "Oh, come I show you take you to the place where <laughs> to the one you are seeking." But the word of God says, but he took them to Samaria. I am realizing brothers and sisters. For a man who sees. Unajua hii vita tunapigana, tunapigana pepo, 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 nina kukanyanga, nina kukanyagia chini, nina kurusha, nina kufikirisha, nina fanya nini. I have come to know that those are prayers of ignorance. But if you are a man who walks accurately with God, you, you don't have to have those gymnastics. God will deliver the enemy into your hands. Mungu ataleta adui kwa mikono yako. Kahora. Pole pole. Kahora. Oh, yeah, good. Pole pole. pole. Kahora. Pole pole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hakuna mambo mengi. Hakuna mambo mengi. Hakuna kukanyangia chini. Mm-hmm. Hakuna kukalia. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you deliver the enemy into your hands. Hata adui kwa mikono yako. Slowly and beautifully. Pole pole na kwa kurembesha. Until the enemy later on is asking. Waka adui ya uliza. How did we get here? Tulifika <laughs> hapa na kukani. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh. He came alikuja kukufunga wewe. Amen. Lakini anapata ya kwamba yeye ndiye amefungwa. Amen. He came to ambush you. Alikuja kukufanyia. But he finds that he is the one who has ambushed. Anagundua ya kwamba yeye ndiye ameshikwa. He said in the name of Jesus. Nasema katika jina la Yesu. We are not on the receiving end of the enemy. Sio sisi tutapokea kutoka kwa adui. The enemy is on the receiving end from us. Sisi ndio tutampatia kutoka kwetu. Amen. We are not the people to receive from him. But he received from us the beating. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you imagine a whole army with the chariots and commanders? Mm-hmm. A whole army with commanders. <laughs> and with the people with the debe huku wako na sinaitwa nini? Watu ambao wako na debe huku kwa bega. Medos. At how they fought wars and conquered territories. They are following a, a man with a bowed head who is called Elisha. Elisha was a man with a bowed head. Mtu ambaye kwa na kipara ambaye aliitwa Elisha. And then he says, let the eyes be open. Anasema wacha macho haya yafunguliwe. And they look around. Na wanatazama. This is the king of Israel. Wanasema huyu ni mfalme wa Israeli. These are the armies of Israel. Hawa ni wanajeshi wa Israeli. The king us. Mfalme akauliza. We kill them. Tuwaue. Let's kill them now. Wacha tuwaue sasa. Elisha tells him don't watch wacha hiyo upushi. Elisha akamwambia wacha. I mean, I mean, if you go to war and you have a spoil. Ukienda kwa vita na ushike mateka. Do you kill them? Je, huwa unaua? Just give them food. Wape chakula. <laughs> but yeah, watu chakula waende. Wape chakula waende. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the word of God says they never needed Israel again. Neno la Bwana linasema hawakuvamia Israeli. I said in the name of Jesus. Nasema katika jina la Yesu. They met a man who sees. Mtu ambaye huwa anaona. And I prophesy over your life.